Hello team, Coach Tim here. Just wanting to have a real quick discussion with you guys today about how instinctively uh, does my athlete try and respond to when my golf club is in a different position inside my hands. And, you know, uh, I've hit a lot of golf balls in my lifetime. I think I've calculated with a, a very good friend of mine, Ben Hongo, uh, many, many years ago that I probably hit over 3 million golf balls in my lifetime. Uh, Number one, that should tell you how I'm not well, right? Considering uh, just how much time and energy that I've uh, dedicated to this game. Uh, and number two, why the heck aren't I better at this uh, stupid game, right? But I think that's just the condition of every golfer. But having said that, right, because I have hit a lot of golf balls in my lifetime, if you put the tool inside of my hands differently, my athlete starts to respond uh, to how the tool is inside my hands and to try and make adjustments to help me still perform at a high level. And that's what I think most of us do uh, when it comes to striking a golf ball, is that we have the golf club inside our hands. We hope and pray that it's aimed straight. For most of us, it isn't. And uh, because it's an incredibly hard thing to measure right here from a static position compared to a dynamic position, right? But most of us don't try and place our hands on the golf club uh, in the correct position from a dynamic location. Uh, if you're interested on how you want to try and do that, go ahead and click up in the, uh, the banner up top here uh, to be able to figure out how to um, um, uh, uh, accomplish that uh, characteristic there. Okay. So, but, uh, you know, if we're a little bit more old school and we want to still kind of be able to understand the concept of Goldilocks and the three bears of playing from a closed club face position and how does my athlete respond? compared to an open club face position, and how does my athlete respond? That's what this conversation is going to be about, okay? And so, you know, if I go ahead and have this conversation first, uh, by just talking about how would my athlete respond to a static club face position, and how would I were try and return it to a square face position, I'm going to go ahead and do this here right now. I'm going to twist the club face to about 1030, and I'm going to place that right down here next to the golf ball. Okay, and if I wanted to return that club face to a square face position through movement, I'd have to do probably something like this. I probably have to have some lateral movement forward. You see how the lateral movement forward starts to get the club face more open. I might even add a little bit of rotational elements to that. So now my body's starting to move more. I might even add a little bit of extension with my left wrist, so I don't have uh, so much flexion, but I might have a little bit of extension. And those would be things right here that we see really in all honesty, aside from maybe the flexion, although plenty of good golfers do get into extension with their lead wrist as well, is that um, uh, that would be what I, we, we all think that most good golfers do. They get their mass to their lead side quickly. They use a, a lot of rotational forces in their body to maximize how far they can hit the golf ball. And that's where it seems for uh, most of us that we see really high performing athletes play at the most elite levels uh, out on the world, uh, on the, out on the world's golf scene, okay? So that's what I did from a club face that was pointing at uh, 1030, okay? Now, let's do the exact opposite. Let's go ahead and spin the club face so it's pointing at about 130, okay? And then I want you to see what I statically am gonna try and do here to get the club face more open, right? So number one, look how my mass is moving rightwards. Look how my handle is now getting behind the club head, okay? Uh, and that's what we see in all honesty from a lot of uh, amateur golfers, right? Is that they have a hard time transferring their weight to their target foot, that they try and throw the club, right? And maybe you now start to see that throwing movement is a subconscious response to try and get the club face pointing more to the left. Look how, too, wherever, whenever my club head passes my handle, right? Um, that's where the bottom of the arc is. So if I go ahead and just make that small little exercise right there, we can see the low point of this grandfather clock is right around here when the club head passes the handle. So if my club face again goes back to that uh, uh, 130 position and I move my club head back, right, there's a really good chance that the low point was somewhere back here by my right foot how many new golfers kind of have the same symptom, right? Where we hit uh, the grass too early in our strike. So a lot of the symptoms that you struggle with, in my humble opinion, 
all stems from the fact that we just don't have the golf club inside of our hands correctly, okay? And that if we want to make a change to that, uh, boy, uh, wouldn't it be kind of neat to see what subconscious adjustments that your athlete does once the club face is in more of a, a, a correct position for you. Uh, and so that's the question or the query that I want to kind of uh, dangle the carrot in front of the horse's mouth for all of you that are watching and listening to my video here right now. And why don't you come and see me and let me try and impact your golf game, whether it be here at the beautiful uh, Newport Coast in California at Pelican Hill or up in uh, Park City at uh, the beautiful Promontory Golf Club. So uh, uh, continued success, best of luck, and hope to see and hear from you in the very near future.